Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Kofta Kebabs. That's right, I am very excited to be sharing what is one of my favorite all-time things to grill. And this is perfect for those times when you want to take a break from grilling burgers, but you also kind of want a grilled burger. Since basically what this is, is a Mediterranean style meatball on a stick. And I know Shishk gets more love, but Kofta might just be the best kebab. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with a piece of toast. No, you probably didn't see that coming, but we're gonna start with one piece of whole grain bread that we've toasted to a beautiful golden brown. And what we'll do is take a knife and cut this into nice thin strips, at which point we'll cut those strips across into a nice small dice. And while not all kofta kebabs actually have a filler in them or use a different filler like a grain, there is just something about a piece of toasted whole wheat bread that works so well with this beef lamb combination of meat we're gonna use. And yes, having said all that, if you have to use a piece of white bread, go ahead. But really, the wheat does work way better. So we'll go ahead and dice that up nice and small. And then we will push that together in the middle of our cutting board. And then we'll top that with some diced onions, as well as a whole bunch of freshly chopped Italian parsley. And then last but not least, a very generous amount of minced garlic. At which point, we will take our knife and start chopping this mixture. And we will keep chopping for about two minutes, or till the mixture becomes fairly fine, and kind of looks like tabbouleh. And of course this would be faster if you used a food processor, but I don't think it tastes as good because in a food processor, all these ingredients get crushed and torn versus cleanly sliced with the blade of a knife like this. So you decide, but this only takes a couple minutes. So I would do it this way. And if you've never seen or had tabbouleh, well, first of all, you really should try it. But if you haven't seen it before, it looks like this. And that's it. Once we get it to this stage, we're gonna stop. And it's now ready to add to our meat mixture. But before we do, let's go ahead and meet our meats, as well as season them up. And my favorite blend for these kebabs is two parts beef to one part lamb, but you can certainly do it with all one or the other, or any ratio you want. And as far as seasoning goes, we're definitely gonna want some kosher salt, as well as its good friend freshly ground black pepper. And we'll also toss in a little bit of allspice, some paprika, a little bit of cardamom, a little touch of nutmeg, and then we'll finish up with some good old-fashioned cayenne pepper. And it's probably obvious, but I'll tell you anyway. You can go ahead and spice this any which way you want. I mean, you are, after all, the slippery peat of how to season your skewered meat. But after trying about 100 different combinations, this is my favorite. And then what we'll do is go ahead and add our toast and onion mixture, as well as a couple tablespoons of nice cold fresh water, which is very important to keep this mixture moist, so don't forget that. And once we have all that together, we'll get in there with our hands, and we will mix and mash this, smoosh and smash this, until it is very, very well combined. And for once, we don't have to worry too much about overmixing. Okay, usually when we're making meatballs or meatloaf, we usually wanna be careful not to overmix because the texture will become too firm. But here, that's exactly what we're going for. But don't worry, it's still gonna be very tender and very moist, thanks to that toast and onion and parsley mixture, as well as that water we added. But having said that, once it is mixed and everything's been equally distributed, you can stop. Otherwise, you're just wasting time. And we have other things to do, like covering this in plastic and popping it in the fridge until it's well chilled before we form our kebabs. And I would say like an hour would be the minimum time, but you can totally leave this overnight, and I think the flavors develop even further. But either way, once our meat is well chilled, we'll go ahead and pull it out, and we will take exactly one-fourth of the mixture, and we will roll that into a ball, using, of course, wet hands, since, as you well know, damp hands make smooth balls. And once we do have a portion rolled into a smooth ball, we will pierce that right in the middle with a bamboo skewer, and then we will simply squeeze that meat into a uniform log, about six inches long or so, and about two inches wide, getting it as uniform as possible so that it grills evenly. And yes, of course, if you're using wooden skewers, you're gonna soak those in water for about an hour at least, so they don't start on fire on the grill. In fact, the real skewers used for these are made of metal, and they're much flatter and wider, which makes them a lot better to hold the meat on. But this type of skewer is fine. And we're actually gonna use our tongs to turn these. So if we're being completely honest, the skewer in this recipe is more of a decoration. But if we wanna call it a kebab, and we do, we gotta stab it with something. Okay, otherwise we have to call it a meat log. And do you wanna eat something called a kofta kebab or a kofta meat log? Yeah, that's what I thought. And that's it, once those are formed, we'll go ahead and wrap those up and keep them in the fridge until we're ready to grill which I am. 
So I'm going to go ahead and transfer those down on my very high-end $18 grill. Oh yes, this grill cost $18, which is not so much a brag. It's more like a cry for help. But anyway, it works fine. And as usual, I'll be cooking these over some very hot charcoal that we've let burn until it's nice and ashy. Okay, if your coals are still on fire, don't put the meat down. And if you do, the meat's going to taste like gasoline. And then people always blame the lighter fluid, but it's not the lighter fluid. You can't cook food on orange flames, or at least you're not supposed to. So please wait for the fire to go out and for your coals to be very, very hot. And kebabs this size are generally going to take about 12 to 15 minutes total. So what I usually try to do is give each side about 3 minutes, times 4 would be 12 minutes, and then kind of go from there. And I know that instruction is kind of geometrically incorrect, since round things don't have sides, they just have side. But if we visualize these things having four sides, we'll give each one of those about three minutes, which should get us pretty close. And by the way, this is not something we want to try to cook medium rare. Okay, we really do want that heat to get all the way through so those onions get cooked and those particles of bread can absorb the fat being released by the beef and lamb. So I'm shooting for something like a medium well, which is not only going to allow for that stuff I just described to happen, but it's also going to give us enough time so the outside gets beautifully browned and crusty. And as usual, when we're grilling over charcoal, you're going to get some spots that are hotter or cooler than others. So if you need to rotate and change positions, go ahead. That is just you grilling. And I guess we could go by temperature and pull these off at about 145 or so. But I just like to give them the old polka polka with my finger. And when they spring back and start to get fairly firm to the touch, I figure they're just about perfect which are exactly how mine were feeling here. So I went ahead and pulled those off and headed back inside, where I like to place them over a beautiful fresh salad of tomatoes, cucumbers, and onions, just very simply dressed with some salt and olive oil. And we are definitely going to want some kind of flatbread or pita alongside. And no, I didn't make that, but I really should have, since it was not as good as it looked. Okay, in a perfect world, you've made a batch of our Lebanese mountain bread, which would be absolutely spectacular with these. And then I'm also going to serve these with a nice lemony tahini dressing. And I'll serve most of it when I plate up, but I do want to do a little bit of a racing stripe along the middle. You know, for the pictures. And we'll finish up with a little bit of parsley. And that's it, our kofta kebabs are ready to enjoy. Which, since these are nice and hot, I'm going to start doing right on this platter. And while the insides of these are not going to win any beauty contests, the texture of these are so perfect, and they are so incredibly flavorful, that nobody will care. And quite often when I cook something like this, I'll go with a yogurt-based sauce, which definitely would work with these, but I've tried both, and I just prefer the tahini with this for whatever reason. Okay, I'm not sure if it's the sesame flavor or just the extra richness it adds, but as long as you make your tahini sauce with plenty of lemon, I think it's going to be a perfect pairing. And when we were mixing these, it might have looked like we had a lot of filler, you know, that toast and onion mixture compared to the amount of meat, but I think you're going to be shocked at just how meaty these stay. And if I didn't tell you, you might not even know these weren't 100% meat. And not that we did it mainly for that reason, but because we are adding that stuff. This technique is definitely going to save you a few dollars at the market. So we got that going for us, which is nice. But anyway, that's enough eating off the platter like a savage. Let me go ahead and plate one of these up on what looked like it was going to be really good flatbread. But to hedge my bets, I added plenty of tahini. Since for something like this, it can never be too saucy. And I went ahead and wrapped it up and bid in. And it really was absolutely fantastic, except for the bread, which could not have been more disappointing. Right, it didn't taste terrible, it just had a weird texture, and kind of fell apart as I was trying to eat this. So I had to resort to eating this with a fork, or at the very least a fork and finger combo. So the moral of the story is if you're going to make some world-class kebabs like this, find yourself a decent flatbread or pita, or better yet, find our recipe for pita bread and make up a fresh batch. Or as I already mentioned, our Lebanese mountain bread would have been perfect for this. But anyway, I showed you how to make it. I'm sure you'll figure out how to eat it. But no matter how you decide to serve yours, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.